Welcome back to the channel. A few months ago, I built a French cleat wall to organize the tools that I had in my shop, and it's been really nice. But I had a viewer ask me, what do I do whenever I get new tools? And I responded that if you're replacing an existing tool and it's similar in size, you might be able to make the existing container work, but chances are you're gonna have to build new containers. As I've added more boxes to the French cleat wall, it's gotten kind of crowded, and I see an opportunity to optimize how I'm using the space for my clamps. So in this video, I'm gonna be building some clamp racks that extend outwards from the wall rather than across it to save some space. Let's get building. For this project, I'm going to build a custom clamp rack for each group of clamps that I own. So I start off by taking a measurement of the width of each grouping of clamps, because that is going to be the length that the clamp rack needs to protrude away from the wall in order to fit all the clamps that I've got. I'm also gonna be looking to use some of the scraps that I've got left over from other projects. And I'm pretty fortunate because most of the clamp racks that I need to build are six inches, and I've got a really nice long strip of three quarter inch plywood that's exactly six inches. For the bigger 50 inch Borla parallel clamp, I need eight inches, so I'll have to rip one of the longer pieces of plywood to eight inches in order to make those holders. Once my pieces are cut, I go over to my miter saw and I cut each of the holders at about 50 degrees. And what I'm looking to do is just to keep a flat section on the protruding edge that's gonna be sticking out away from the wall, just for a safety standpoint. I don't want a sharp edge sticking out that could hurt somebody or that somebody could bump into later down the road. So once I have one cut, I use that same template to cut all the similar pieces. And then I head over to my downdraft table and just take off any of the burrs and the rough edges on all the pieces that I've just cut. So for all the pieces that are the same, I use the compression clamp to group them together and just kind of knock this all out at one time. Um, but I only used 120 grit here just to try to smooth over some of those rougher edges. The next step in this process was to cut the French cleat holders. And to do that, I set my table saw to 45 degrees and just take a piece of two and a quarter inch uh, strip of plywood that I had laying around and I run it through to create the cleat itself. Now, whenever I created my French cleat wall, I pumped out a ton of these to batch them out to be more efficient, but I've actually gone through all of that stock now that I've built a lot of additional containers for the French cleat wall since that build. Once that's done, I take the pieces of wood that have been cut and sanded, and I dry fit them on top of my workbench to fit each of the clamp styles that are I'm gonna be making holders for. This gives me a feel for roughly what each holder is going to look like. And whenever those are in position, I take my tape measure and get a measurement of what the spacing needs to be. Whatever the measurement in between the two pieces was, I added an eighth of an inch, and then cut a backer piece that was exactly an eighth of an inch bigger than what I measured to give a little bit of wiggle room to be able to easily put the clamps back whenever I was done using them. With the backer plate cut, it comes down to assembly and I'm just using a little bit of tight bond one and some brad nails to hold them in place. I'm making sure that the edges of that holder are flush up against the back plate because that back plate is the exact spacing in order to fit the clamp plus an eighth of an inch tolerance um, for just a little bit of wiggle room. Once everything is in place, I then take the French cleat and put it on the back, again, using a similar tight bond one and some brad nails to hold it in place. 
As you're applying the French cleat, make sure it's pointed in the right direction before you start brad nailing. I can tell you from personal experience, it's very easy to install these upside down if you're not paying attention. So that's a lesson learned from my mistakes. After that first clamp rack was completed, it was really just a rinse and repeat exercise for the other three clamp holders. Here you see me assembling the larger clamp rack for the 50 inch Bora parallel clamps that I have. And again, using the same construction, just a little bit of tight bond one and some brad nails. Um, I would say that total time for this project was probably about an, a little less than an hour's worth of shop time. I did step away for a little bit just to give the glue some time to set before I started to put the clamps in the racks, but it was about an hour's worth of time. So, you know, if you divide that time across the four containers that I built, you know, it works out to about 10 or 15 minutes per rack that I did. This is something that I could easily replicate again in the future if I expand my clamp collection, which eventually I would like to do, but clamps are pretty expensive and I think every woodworker knows that you can't have enough wood clamps. So inevitably, I'm going to be making some more of these in the future, but I just thought I would share this as a uh, organization technique as well as a way to use some of the scraps that might be lying around your shop. Once all the containers were complete, I then took the time to remove all the clamps from their existing racks and remove the old racks themselves from the French cleat system. That's one of the nice things about using a French cleat system is all this stuff is interchangeable and can be pulled apart and relocated with relative ease. The last step in this process is to install the new clamp racks onto the French cleat wall and fill them with their respective clamps. And you can already see how much space this is saving on the French cleat wall by having those clamps come outwards as opposed to across, which is going to allow me to optimize the space on the French cleat wall. Now you'll remember from the previous picture, because of the amount of space that the clamps took up, the left side of the French cleat wall got really crowded. And it's because I added a lot more clamps to this wall than I had originally built it for. And you can see the earmuffs that I have on the left hand side are kind of off to the side because there's just not enough space below them to actually hang the way it was designed for. Now with this new design, things have been cleaned up a lot. I've been able to reorganize where I've got certain tools and it's just, it feels a lot more organized because stuff is not crowded within the French cleat wall itself. I know most woodworkers out there have some collection of clamps that they use for their projects and you don't even need a French cleat wall to be able to utilize a organization system like this. If you wanted to build a clamp rack that extended out of the wall instead of across the wall, you could do something similar, just remove the French cleat from the design and you'd still get the same effect. That's going to be it for this video, but if you've got any ideas on how I could better organize my shops or good ideas that you've seen, please let me know in the comments section below and I'll see you on the next one.